Hello, today we have a follow-up video about an absolute positioning system that I have figured out for my Skywatcher Star Adventure tracking mount using uh, some declination scale that I have taped into my declination bracket and also the setting circles on the back. So if you haven't watched that original video that I published last week, you probably should watch it first. I will put a link to it right here in this corner, but if you have already watched it and you, you would like to recreate this kind of system for your own unit, then this is a video for you because I will explain here some technical stuff, how I calibrated everything, how I put everything together. So, all right, let's get started. All right, so at first let's talk about the declination. As you can see on my declination, I have taped in this uh, angular scale, this protractor scale on the declination bracket. This is not something that comes with the declination bracket for the Skywatcher Star Adventure, you would have to do that yourself. And this particular scale, you can head over to the description of this video and you can find a link to, uh, to this kind of an image. As you can see, I have three of them right here and you can print it out, you can cut it out and you can tape it onto your declination bracket. But the one challenging thing here is what kind of a printout scale do you need to set in your printer for it to be exactly, to be measuring exactly degrees? Because as you can see, this part has a circular shape and as you wrap it around, this scale starts, uh, you have a zero here, then you have 90 here in the middle, and then you have again zero. So when you wrap it around, you need to make sure that the two zeros are exactly on the diameter of the circle. And the easiest way to figure out this printout scale, this is what I did for myself. And honestly, I don't even remember what printout scale did I use, but you may have a different size of paper, different printer. So you just need to figure it out for yourself. And this is how I did uh, for, for myself. So I took uh, this tool, this is called calipers. And this is a very accurate tool to, to measure stuff. So uh, I measured the diameter of this and the diameter of this, as you can see, it's pretty much like seven centimeters, 7.08 centimeters. This is the diameter of this guy. And what I need, I need a half of a circumference because this, the half of the circumference is exactly the measurement that I should see when I measure the distance between the two zeros on the flat sheet of paper. So in order to calculate half of a circumference, we can use a very simple equation. We know that pi times diameter is the circumference. So half of the circumference is going to be half pi times diameter. So we can calculate that easily. Uh, 7.08 times 3.14, this is pi divided by two. This gives me 11.11, uh, so 11.11 centimeters. This is the length of this strip of paper that I should measure here. So let's say that if you print it out at 100% scale, you measure exactly 10 centimeters. Let's assume that. So you can write a simple proportion that 10 centimeters is at 100% percent of the printout scale. And you need it to measure exactly 11.11 .11 centimeters. So 11.11 .11 is the unknown x. So x is 11.11 .11 times 100 divided by 10, and this is in percentages. So you just need to calculate that and dial in this percentage value in your printer, and then if you print it out and cut it out, when you wrap it around the declination bracket, it is going to measure accurate degrees. All right, and now that you have this printed out at the correct scale, of course, you need to cut it out using your scissors, and then you are going to need to tape it in onto the declination bracket. And right here, you need to be careful, or rather you need to be prepared for the fact that this surface is not easy to glue stuff into. It's not a perfectly smooth surface. It's a, It has a little bit of a ruggedness to it, which makes it not really glue friendly. So you need to try out different adhesives or, or tapes or something. I just use a transparent piece of a scotch tape. And one other thing that you need to be aware of is the fact that, okay, you are measuring accurate degrees, but how do you know where to actually tape it? Because you can tape it a little bit like this, a little bit like this. And how do you know which way is a, an accurate position that the 90 degrees it's actually um, showing you the 90 degrees position in declination. And for this one, you actually don't need to be super accurate because if you use the kind of an indicator that I am using, which I'll show you in just a second, 
then you can calibrate it afterwards. But of course, you should try to make it as close as possible. You can just put something here like perpendicular to this and make sure that the 90 here sort of is, you know, in the middle of, of this part. And then just tape it in and you are good to go. So now let's talk about what kind of an indicator you could use here. So I told you in the previous video that I am using an indicator that is just a piece of a little tiny white wire. This is the kind of wire that uh, you would find if you buy a, like a cable, an extension cord or something like this and they use these wires to keep the cord nice and neat in the package. So I just cut a little bit off of it and this is a flexible wire which is going to be important in a moment. But you can use, you know, anything that you have lying around in your house. And I just sandwiched it between the foot of the lens collar where my lens will go uh, and this declination bracket. So I just screw it in a little bit, put it inside here and then screw it all the way. And now what you want to do, if you are actually in the field and you need to calibrate where is the 90 degrees so that when you start turning it, it is showing you accurate values of the declination. What I do is I just look at it and make sure that this surface right here is parallel to this surface. And the way to do that you could do, uh, you could measure it with calipers again using the depth uh, measurement right here. So I could measure the depth uh, here and make sure that it is the same as here. But I, basically, what I'm doing in the field, I don't take my calipers into the field. You can just take something flat like a uh, case of uh, of a filter, and you can put it here, and then make sure that you are nice and parallel with regards to this guy. So for instance, right now, I think we are pretty good if we eyeball how much of the black part can we still see from uh, from beneath the, the case of the filter. So this is going to be our 90 degrees. And then if I look up in the front, make sure this is nice and tight right here, I can use my flexible indicator to make sure that I am actually pointed, I can just bend it in a way that it points at 90 degrees. So as you can see, I have uh, I have set it in a way that this is parallel to this guy. So I am sure that I am pointed straight here. I am not twisted in any way in declination. And then this reading is going to be 90. So then whenever I am turning here, as you can see, for instance, I am turning by 10 degrees then I know that this is actually 80 because I have calibrated this indicator to show 90 where it should show 90. I hope you know what I mean. And now one of the most common questions I got under the previous video about this system was what can you do if you actually have a declination of your object that is negative. For instance, if you are on the northern hemisphere and you have the declination from 0 to 90, from 90 to 0, what if the object that you want to photograph has a negative declination from, for instance, minus 20 degrees? And well, in this case, what you can do basically is you can just mount the lens backwards. So normally, if I undo this screw to open this lens collar, uh, I can mount my lens. I can mount my lens like this. So this is this would be like the regular position. And then, of course, to this, I would attach, attach my camera and everything else. But if my declination is negative, then I can just undo this and put my lens sort of backwards here. So, uh, yeah, there you go. So now the lens is actually backwards. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, the lens is backwards. Of course, if you if the lens color that you are using or the telescope that you are using does not allow you to kind of uh, put it uh, backwards, what you of course can do is you can just undo everything, uh, put this entire color upside down and then put this, uh, not upside down, but the other way around. And then you can put this indicator on the back and that way, uh, if you have a negative declination on the northern hemisphere, you can just flip the orientation of the lens and the entire entire optical path in order to, to accommodate for that. Of course, you would need to kind of flip the way that you uh, 
that you use the declination angle here. So for instance, normally you would twist it uh, counterclockwise, but you may need to uh, twist it clockwise if you do this kind of a flip. I will leave down below a link to a textual form where I explain uh, which way do you need to turn declination either clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on if you have your lens forwards or backwards, and if you have a meridian flip or not on the right ascension scale. So now that we have our declination covered, let's talk about the right ascension. So with the right ascension, we have a different set of challenges that we have to overcome because we can use the setting circles that you have right here on the back. As you can see, if I rotate the right ascension, we have uh, different readings of the date graduation dial, this one with regards to the time graduation dial that is fixed to the body of the Skywatcher Adventure. So if this rotates, those readings are changing and we can take advantage of that in order to figure out what is the current uh, hour angle of our setup. So first you need to make sure that the date graduation dial is actually in the same position with regards to the polar scope. So right here, this little notch is the what is called the meridian offset indicator. And if I hold, if I hold the right ascension so it doesn't uh, turn, I can actually turn the date graduation dial freely. As you can see, the right ascension is not turning, but the date graduation circle is turning. So you just need to make sure that you are always setting this one to the same position. So for instance, the zero here on the on the time meridian indicator offset should be at this at this indicator so zero when zero meets the indicator that you know that you have the same orientation of the date graduation dial with regards to the right ascension axis so you can use that for further reference so this is exactly what i did and right now well, what I uh, what I mentioned in the previous video, what I did is that I have make a, made a video recording of how those two readings, the, the reading on the date graduation dial with regards to the time graduation dial, how it progresses over time as the entire mount is rotating around. I made a video recording and then I mapped it to the hour angle and how to do that exactly I will show in just a second. But uh, what exactly is the position of zero hour angle? Where well, that is a position, well, the mount is actually level right here. It's this position either with the screw down here or with the screw up here when this is level. Because in this situation, if we take our declination bracket, now that we have our declination bracket, if you have this position that is horizontal, then you can swivel this guy up and down and you can start with zero hour angle if you swivel it upwards. And then if you rotate, you can change your hour angle. So this is the zero. You can either choose the position with the screw that is down here or, or upwards. I chose the position with the screw downwards and the position that we have zero hour angle, as I said, is a level. So I just need to take a bubble level basically hold it here and then as I rotate the right ascension as you can see the bubble level is going at some point to show me that I am leveled and if the entire mount is leveled so this uh, this bubble level right here is showing you that you have the mount leveled which is going to be the situation in the field if this is leveled and if this let's remove the screw because this might actually interfere with the placement of the bubble level if this is showing me level right here and assuming that I am leveled also at the base, which I might not on this table, but you need to do that, then this is going to be our zero. And you can actually look up in this situation what is the indication between the date graduation dial with regards to the time graduation dial. And this might be different for your particular unit. This is one of the reasons why I didn't release yet the video recording that I was using uh, and that I was showing you in my previous video because this reference point, the zero hour angle may be a little bit different in your unit. So I don't didn't want to um, have you using my recording if this was not calibrated to your own unit. So what you can do is either you can check out what is this reading with the leveled right ascension in your unit and then use that reading uh, as an offset with regards to what you see in my recording or you can just create this kind of a recording for your own. So assuming that you would like to make it for your own uh, for now, uh, one important thing is that you don't actually need to have a polar alignment because if you think about it, polar alignment is just moving. If you, if you 
fine tune your polar alignment, you are moving your azimuth and you are moving your tilt, and none of which is actually screwing with your level. So if this is leveled, and then I am rotating in azimuth, I am not screwing, I am not changing the, the fact that I am leveled here. And same goes for the tilt. So you don't need to be polar aligned, but you need to be leveled at the base in order to do that. So just level everything and turn on the time-lapse mode at the hemisphere that you are at and take a video recording of how these two indications are changing over time and then you can map it out to the hour angle. So let, so let me show you on the computer how I mapped it to the hour angle value. All right, so in order to make this kind of a video where you have those uh, those indications mapped into hour angles, the best way that I know of to do that is in After Effects. So if you bring this kind of a footage, as you can see, if I scrub through, I need to zoom it out. If I scrub through, the, the right ascension is rotating and it is changing these indications of these two dials. So in order to map it to uh, and display it as an hour angle, the best way to do it is first make sure that the beginning and uh, the indication in the beginning with regards to with, with those two, uh, two dials is exactly the same as this indication at the very end of in your composition inside After Effects. And then of course make sure that you don't have any dead space. So make sure that it starts exactly when this is starting to rotate and right here you end it when you have the same exact indication. So now you know that your entire composition in After Effects contains only of this movement 360 degrees around the right ascension axis. And then in order to display the text, we are just going to bring up the text tool. I'm just going to move it here. I'm just going to type whatever here, text, T, E, X, and T. Uh, let's move it somewhere, for instance, uh, let's move it here. And then what you want to do, you want to expand this, expand text, and then Option or Alt click on the stopwatch here in the source text. And this is going to bring up an After Effects uh, script uh, edit box. And you're going to need to insert a script that I have wrote. This is a script. You can just uh, copy that. Uh, I'm going to input it here. And the only important part for this script to work is that this name right here is the name of your composition. So it says precomp1 here, and this is the name that I have right here. And this is a script that I'm not going to explain in detail how it works, but basically it converts the current timestamp in this composition into the indication of the hour angle. So just like that, as you can see, I can move that here. As you can see, if I scrub here, it changes the indication of the hour angle. So as I have shown you in my previous video, I can just look up what kind of an hour angle do I need. In this case, this is 11 hours and 32 minutes. And what kind of an indication of these two dials do I need to set on my adventure in order to have this exact our angle set in my mount. And that's basically it. I hope it wasn't too difficult to follow. If you have any questions, I like always, you can hit me up in the comments down below, or you can write me an email. All of my contact informations and link to my social profiles are in the description of this video. And like I mentioned, the link to these uh, declination scales uh, is going to be in the description of this video. Also, the video recording of the way that those two dials are changing on my Skywatcher Star Adventure as it turns 360 degrees and the mapping to the hour angle. This original time-lapse video is going to be also linked down below in the description so you can download it and use it for yourself. But just make sure that the zero hours indication using a, yeah, using a bubble level like this one that it is matching on your unit and if it's not matching you need to figure out what is the offset and you need to apply that offset if you do the positioning uh, that I have shown in the previous video out in the field. I hope it makes sense and I hope you liked this video. If you did, please make sure to leave it a like. I would really appreciate that. And also subscribe to my channel for future videos like this. I will be definitely making more videos like this. So I hope to see you in one of my future videos and until then, clear skies and bye bye.